I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. Here we go. We're reading God's word. We're doing what we heard. We're spreading God's love from John chapter 3rd. We're memorizing scripture. We don't hide it in our hearts. And when we're old, we will never depart. Why? I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 set. I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 set. I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. Watch and see this who we start to be. KB kids affecting the world around us positively. We are growing day by day. We are watching what we say. We are kingdom builder kids and we're here to pave the way. Hey, we are kingdom builders, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, Hey kids, why are we still standing here? It's this way to KB. Good morning, KB kids, and welcome to worship today. My name is Miss D, and guess what? It is volume number 122. Yes, it is volume 122, and I am so excited that you are joining me for KB kids virtual worship today. I am super excited because you know what's coming up. We are about to celebrate the best birthday of the year. No, it's not Miss D's birthday. Although, if you said that, you know me well. You know I love my birthday. No, we are about to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In just a few short days, it's going to be, say it with me, Christmas. Yes, it's going to be Christmas time. That's what I got on my Christmas PJs and my Christmas tinsel, and I am excited to be worshiping with you guys as we celebrate and anticipate the Christmas holiday. How have you guys been? How has your December been thus far? I hope it has been well. I hope you are doing well. I hope you're excited about the little break that you have off of school right around this time. I hope you finish strong, and I cannot wait to dive in today's session with you. We are going to have our favorites. We're going to have some fun today. It's going to be a blast as we celebrate and anticipate Jesus' birthday. Guess what? It's going to be a candy cane Christmas. That's right. We are talking candy cane Christmas today, and I hope you like the sweet treats. They're super popular around this time, and they're just delicious. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. You know what we have to do first and foremost? We have to say our confessions. Why, Misty? I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says that we can have whatsoever we say. When we say it with our mouths, it's based on the Word of God. It will happen in our lives. I don't know about you. I want some good things happening in my life, so I am going to confess all the blessings I can get here and now. We had some KB friends who were kind enough to send us in a video of the confession. So, KB friends, take it away. I love God. I love the Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed Holy Spirit, the things of the Spirit, the Word of God, the work of God, and the people of God. Better than I love anything else in all this world. In Jesus' name, amen. I put on the whole armor of God so I can stand against the devil's schemes. The I will salvation, the shield, the shield of peace, the belt of truth, the, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And I will use the word to knock down, to crush, and to stop. Anything that is not of God, I am a winner, born to be a leader, to set the captains free, and to lead men in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Why? Because I am a righteous seed. Bye, KB Kids. Bye. 
awesome. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys. I always love when I can get other people, especially my KB friends, involved in our virtual worship. All right, guys, you know what we're about to do. It's story time with Grandma Sandy. And this week, Grandma Sandy has a special Christmas poem just for you. I know you're going to enjoy it. Check it out. Story time with Grandma Sandy. It's story time! Yay! Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Story Time with Grandma Sandy. I am so excited about reading the Bible with you today. Now, come on, go and get your Bible and meet me at the rocking chair. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to Story Time with Grandma Sandy. I am so glad to see you back. Do you know what we're celebrating this month? Yes, if you said Christmas, you are so right. We are celebrating Jesus' birthday. I have a special poem for you today written by a very special young lady. I'll tell you who it is at the end of the poem. Let's get started. The title of the poem is The Reason for the Season. I love Christmas. I cried as I jumped up with cheer. Tomorrow it will finally be here. I'll get so many presents, my heart will soar. Video games, clothes, money, and much, much more. Getting and receiving is what I live for. Christ in giving, boy, what a bore. So on Christmas Eve, I climbed into bed, knowing not of the journey on which I would be led. Hours later, I awoke with a start and with much fright, I saw at the foot of my bed, a bright shining light. Who is it? I cried as I covered my head. I am an angel, answered the being at the foot of my bed. What do you want with me? I asked, I'm just a girl. I have come to show you the great pearl. Pearl? My greedy heart started turning with glee. Yes, young child, please come with me. The angel grabbed my hand and we were off. But when we landed, I began to scoff. What is this place? Said I, making a face. We were in an open field and all was dark. You could hear a pin drop or a dog bark. Then all of a sudden, with much glare, millions of lights begin to fill the air. As I realized they were angels, they begin to sing, glory to God. They really let it ring. We left them singing, the angel up ahead. One more stop before you go back to bed. We came to a town, Bethlehem was its name. And again, the town appeared to be quite lame. But this town is different, I thought with a frown, as I looked all around and up and down. Then I saw it perched in the sky, a star whose light seemed never to die. Below, below the star, is the great pearl, said the angel, a gift for every boy 
and girl. Let's go. Hurry up, angel, I said. It could not be said which one of us led. Then we came to where the star was perched, and when I looked in, my stomach lurched. What is that smell? said I when I was able. This is where the great pearl lies in this very stable. Then I came closer and with much surprise, I saw a man and a woman and I heard baby cries. Then I came closer. As I looked at this scene, my heart began to ponder. And what the angel said next filled me with much wonder. This is the pearl, the pearl of great price. He came to this earth as a living sacrifice. Today he was born to live among men. God sent him to save the world from sin. His birthday is now called Christmas, a day full of love. But the reason for this holiday, most don't know of. Getting gifts is not the reason. Instead, Christ's birthday is the reason for this season. So off I went back to my room. I'm sorry, I said, my heart full of gloom. I lost my focus, and I was a greedy girl. Thank you for reminding me, Lord, of the great pearl. So the angel left, and I climbed back into bed, saying to myself, I will never forget where this journey led. The next morning, when I awoke, I stopped, taking Christmas as a big joke. Before opening my presents, I climbed out of bed, and Luke chapter 2 is what I read. Now I will never forget that for every Christmas season, Jesus Christ alone is the true reason for this season. Boys and girls, this was written by our own Dr. Natalie. It was written when she went to Youth Fest back in 1997. Isn't that a great poem to remind us what this season really is all about? It's not about presents. It's not about Christmas trees. It's not about great dinners. But it's about the love that God has for the world. John 3.16 is not a verse that we concentrate much around this season, but it's perfect for this season. For God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son that if you would believe in him, you would have eternal life and you would go and live with Jesus forever after you left this life. What a promise God has given each and one, each one of us. He loves you and me so much. Let's rededicate our life to him today. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus on this earth to die for me I am so grateful. Forgive me for taking Christmas for granted, thinking of everything but Jesus. I ask you to forgive me, and I ask you to take my heart, take my life, and do with it what you want to do, and I will follow you 
and be obedient to you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for sending us Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, have a beautiful Merry Christmas. Have a Happy New Year, and we'll see you next time. And always remember that I love you, but Jesus loves you more. It's story time! Awesome. Thank you so much, Grandma Sandy. We appreciate you coming in and sharing that poem. I can't believe Dr. Natalie wrote that poem way back in 1997. A lot of you guys weren't even born when she wrote that poem. That was pretty cool. Thanks for sharing. All right, guys, it is praise and worship time. It is that time where we lift the name of Jesus higher. And what better time than as we are celebrating the birth of the Savior to lift him up and tell him how much we love him, how grateful we are that he came as a baby to eventually die on the cross for our sins. And so we're going to sing some Christmas favorites today, some fun ones and some traditional ones, but we're going to start off with Feliz Navidad. I just love this song. It's a fun Christmas song and I love singing in Spanish. I don't know Spanish as well as I would like to know it, but this song is always a fun one. So let's sing it together. Feliz Navidad. Savior Jesus Christ. All those things are fun and fine, but we want to make sure we know the true meaning of Christmas and we want to make sure we share it with everyone we meet. So let's sing it together. Go tell it on the mountain.
gonna do some fun ones and some traditional ones. So here's another fun one, Jingle Bells. Who doesn't love Jingle Bells? One of my favorites, let's sing it together. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells. Dashing through the snow In a one horse open sleigh O'er the fields we go Laughing all the way Bells on bobtails ring Making spirits bright What fun it is to ride And sing a sleighing song tonight Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells Jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride In a one horse open sleigh Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow In a one-horse open sleigh O'er the fields we go Laughing all the way Bells on bobtails ring Making spirits bright What fun it is to ride And sing a sleighing song tonight Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells Jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride In a one-horse open sleigh But not least, we are going to sing Angels We Have Heard on High. We talk about in the Christmas story about how the angel came to Mary, how the angel came to Joseph, how the angel came to the shepherd. Angels have been declaring the birth of Jesus Christ all throughout Scripture. So we want to sing this morning, Angels We Have Heard on High.
guys had some fun with those traditional and those fun Christmas songs. All right, it is time with Did You Know with Mother Crouch as Mother Crouch drops some new nuggets on us this week. Check it out. Let's see what we can learn. Did You Know with Mother Crouch. Hello, boys and girls, or should I say, KB Kids. Once again, this is your beloved Mother Crouch, and I have been given this fantastic opportunity to share some more golden nuggets with you today. And guess what I'm gonna talk about? Yes, that most popular holiday in December. Can you tell me what it is? If you said Christmas, you are absolutely correct. And we're gonna discuss today, what is the difference between Christmas songs and Christmas carols. So let me get into it. I did my homework, so pay attention. It says, it's that time of the year when Christmas music can be heard everywhere. Did you know what you normally hear in the retail stores and on the radio is not all Christmas carols? So let me share with you the difference. Most of the time when we go to the store and everything like that, we hear Christmas songs. And the difference between Christmas songs and Christmas carols is that Christmas songs usually sing about winter, snow, Santa Claus, Christmas trees. And Christmas carols is more religious, sings about the birth of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's the difference. So I did some homework because I wanted to know what was the most popular song that is heard on the radio, A Christmas Carol. Do you think you know? Well, I know, and guess what it is? Silent Night. That's right, Silent Night is one of the most popular songs, I should say Christmas Carol, that's played on the radio. And then I did some more studying because I wanted to understand, mm, one of the most popular Christmas songs is Jingle Bells. And so I found out that Jingle Bell was written in 1850. And the original title was One Horse Open Sleigh. And it was written by a Mr. James Lord Pepperpoint. And he wrote it because he wanted to do original song for the Sunday School Choir for Thanksgiving back in 1850. That is very interesting when you begin to think about it. And then I found out also one of the most popular songs that's sung in church during Christmas time is Old Little Town of Bethlehem and Come All Ye Faithful. So if, let me read to you some other songs. And maybe you can tell me what do you think, whether these songs that I'm about to share with you, which one do you think is Christmas Carol, which is religious and I always talk about Jesus, or Christmas songs? The first one I have here, Away in a Manger. Hark the herald angels sing. Joy to the world, silent night, 12 days of Christmas, jingle bells. Oh, come all ye faithful, we three kings. Oh, holy night, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Can you tell me which one is a Christmas carol and a Christmas song? Well, you know what, Ms. what Mother Cross gonna do for you? I'm going to give you the opportunity to hear me sing a Christmas song. And if you know it, sing along with me. And it's a favorite one. Here we go. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh, dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, the field we go, laughing all the way, ha, 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 bells on bobtail ring, making spirits bright. What a fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingles all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Yay! Now, before I end with you, I am going to do a Christmas carol. 
O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come, ye, O come, ye to Bethlehem. Born King of angels, Christ our Savior and Redeemer. O come, let us adore him oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him christ the lord so until then until next year oh my goodness i'm looking so forward to next year until then mother cross want to say to you my KB kids, keep on learning. Looking forward to next year. Did you know with Mother Crouch? Awesome. Thank you so much, Mother Crouch. I always love listening and hearing about the nuggets that you have to share with us. All right, guys, it is scripture memory time. It is time to hide the word of God in your heart. One of the most important segments that we have here on KB Kids Virtual Worship. We want to make sure we hide that word in our heart so that when we go out there in those streets, that we are ready and equipped to deal with whatever comes at us. All right, our scripture for today comes from Luke chapter 2, one of the most popular Christmas story uh, chapters in the Bible. Luke chapter 2, verse 14, and this is what it says. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. I love that. Glory to God in the highest heaven. What is this scripture talking about? Again, we talked about the angels, right? Angels we have heard on high. So they're saying glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth. What is that peace on earth? That peace on earth is Jesus. Jesus, he was born to bring us peace. Now at this time, uh, the Israelites, they're being occupied and ruled by the Romans and they were under oppression and things weren't going well and they just wanted some peace. You know, sometimes your parents, you know, you're getting rowdy, you're getting loud and they're like, ah, I just want some peace and quiet. You know, they want you to calm down, go read a book, go color a picture, stop running around, stop fighting your brother and sister. You know, has that ever happened to you? Or maybe it's just me and my siblings growing up. But my parents would often ask us for some peace and quiet, some opportunity to just have some calm in our lives. And at this time, there wasn't a lot of calm in the Israelite community, kind of how it is right now, unfortunately, in the real world. But um, in this particular time, there wasn't a lot of calm. And so as the angels come and they're declaring about the newborn king, they're saying glory to God in the highest heavens and peace on earth. So Jesus brings us peace. So when things are not going well, he's our peace. When we didn't do as good as we wanted to on a particular paper or a test in school, Know that Jesus is your peace. When things aren't going well at home and you're fighting with your parents or you're fighting with your siblings, know that Jesus is our peace and he brings it to us because he loves us. All right, Luke chapter 2, verse 14, let's read it again. And glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Are you one on whom God's favor rests? What does it mean for his favor to rest on you? Do you know what favor is? It's, it's, what, it's what we get when we don't deserve it. You know, when your parents uh, still give you something, even though you know you didn't clean up the way you were supposed to or you didn't do the things you are supposed to, but your parents love you and they always want you to have good things. That's the favor of the Lord. And so when it rests upon you, it just stays in your life. It's just there. You go to the left, it's there. You go to the right, it's there. You go to the front, you go to the back, it's there. It rests on your life. So God's favor rests on us. His peace is here for us. And we are saying glory to God in the highest heavens. Amen? Amen. All right, guys, it is time for a brain break. Sergeant Dad Fitness, 
on deck and loading right now. I am excited because I don't know about you, but I've been sitting for a while, so I need to get up and exercise. So here it is, Sergeant Dad Fitness. Are you ready to get fit and strong? Let's turn the music up and move along. Don't give up, don't give in. Keep it going from beginning to end. Hey there, KB kids, Sergeant Dad's here. I want to say Merry Christmas. I hope you guys have had a great December. I hope you're having an even better Christmas. We know the reason for the season. It's not about toys, it's not about gifts, it's not about candy and having fun. It's about Jesus. But it's also about you finding peace on earth. And that is Jesus. So, I want you guys to get ready, right? We're going to exercise, we're going to get 52 minutes. All right, we're going to stretch down. All right, pull up. Go ahead and put your legs a little bit shorter than the part. And bend over at the waist. And pull back. Look, you see, I'm in my pajamas, my pajamas. I'm ready to exercise right before we start having fun with family. It is only time we have. But if it is afternoon, evening, go ahead and have fun. Get ready. We're going to begin in three, two, one. Our first exercise is going to be the jump and jive. Here we go. Five, two, ten, four, five, six, seven. Turn up music up and move along. Don't give up, don't give in. Keep it going from beginning to end. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sergeant Dad. We appreciate you coming in and helping us to be healthy. All right, guys, it is lesson time. It is time to dig into the word of God and hear what God is saying to us today. Now, we said earlier that it was a candy cane Christmas. 
I don't know about you guys, but I love candy canes. You know, nowadays, when I was younger, there used to be only one flavor, possibly two favorite flavors of candy canes. But nowadays, there are so many flavors of candy canes, I don't even know if you can call them candy canes. It's just maybe just hard candy. Or maybe it's just the fact that, you know, they're in this certain shape. But today we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, and we are saying it's a candy cane Christmas. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, take this candy cane, for instance, right? So this is your typical candy cane. And there's a couple things that the candy cane can remind us of when it comes to talking about the Christmas story. So first, what does this look like to you? This, this shape, what does that shape look like to you? Now, when I look at it, it reminds me of a shepherd's staff. And we know that the shepherds were one of the integral groups of people in the Christmas story, right? Because the angels came to them and they declared the coming of the Savior and they tasked them to go and share with everyone. So the good news of great joy was shared by the shepherds. So when I see this candy cane and it looks like a, a shepherd's staff, it reminds me of the good news that the shepherds shared the night that Jesus was born. Now, if I flip it over, I'll turn it this way so you guys can see it. What, is this what does this look like? Does this look like a particular letter to you? Yeah, this is a J. It looks just like a J. And what does J stand for? Yell it out. Yeah, J stands for Jesus because Jesus is the reason for the season. We're celebrating his birthday. And so this candy cane, when I flip it over, reminds me that it is Jesus's birthday. So, you know, I like to eat mine from the bottom and go all the way to the curb. So while I'm eating it, it just reminds me that J is for Jesus. And the last thing that this candy cane reminds me of is, you know, it's striped and it's red. Now this part is not as happy and as exciting, but it reminds me of the stripes that Jesus had, took for our sins. You know, um, in the Bible, it tells us that when he was arrested, that they whipped him and they beat him because they were angry that he declared himself God. Well, he was God, but they just didn't believe him. And so they thought he was saying something wrong. And so they whipped him and they beat him, even though he had done nothing wrong. And so these stripes remind me of that. And the fact that they're red also remind me of that because when he got beaten, the Bible says that he bled and he died for our sins. And so the, 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 the red stripes remind me of the sacrifice that Jesus made for me. And it reminds me to say thank you. It might, reminds me to be grateful because he didn't have to come. He didn't have to come to save me, but he loved me so much that he didn't want me to die in my trespasses and sins. He wanted me to one day be able to be with him. And so that is why we're saying it's a candy cane Christmas. It's a candy cane Christmas because we're reminded of the shepherds who spoke the good news, who told the good news of great joy to all the people. It reminds me that J is for Jesus. And it reminds me of the ultimate sacrifice of the stripes that he took and the blood that he shed for you and for me. So as we go through this Christmas season, it is going to be exciting. It is going to be fun. Presents, family time, food, um, movies, cookies, all the things that we do as a Christmas tradition. Never forget the true meaning of Christmas, that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen? All right, let's check out our animated video, and let's check out our puppet show to continue to learn a little bit more about our candy cane Christmas. Christmas is when we celebrate God's fulfillment of a promise to send us a Savior. This gift wasn't a surprise, but something people had been waiting many years to receive. The promise of Christmas began with a man named Abraham. God promised Abraham that he would have a descendant and that this descendant would be a blessing to all the nations. When the Apostle Matthew wrote the story of Jesus' life, he said that Jesus was the son of Abraham.
Not only did Matthew say Jesus was a descendant of Abraham, he also said that he was a descendant of King David. Many years before Jesus' birth, the prophet Isaiah promised that Jesus would reign on David's throne. However, unlike any king or other political leader, Jesus would rule with justice and righteousness forever. The prophet Micah foretold that Jesus would be born in the small town of Bethlehem. Micah said that even though Bethlehem was small, the child born there would rule over all of Israel. This ruler, though not yet born, would come from ancient origins. The prophet Isaiah had a lot to say about Jesus' birth. God told him that the promised Messiah would be born in the most miraculous way. He would be born to a virgin through the power of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah said that Jesus would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah went on to tell us more about this Emmanuel and the greatness that was to come. The Savior would be called Wonderful Counselor, the source of all wisdom, Mighty God, the Creator of all things, Everlasting Father, the source of all life, and Prince of Peace, the one who will make all things right. Unfortunately, not all the prophets had good news about how the Savior's life would play out. Some people would reject him. The prophet Jeremiah said that Jesus' life would be in danger when he was born. And the prophet Hosea said that Jesus and his family would have to flee to Egypt for a time to escape the murderous plots against him. Jesus' birth and life fulfilled all of these prophecies, as well as the most incredible one of all. The prophet Isaiah said that Jesus would be a servant who would suffer for the sins of the world. He would give his life so that anyone who believes in him could be saved from sin. At Christmas, we celebrate the promised gift of salvation given to us by God through the sacrifice of his Son, Jesus Christ. Stories of the Bible Mary and Joseph This is Mary. Hi! You see, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but before that happened, she lived in the town of Nazareth. Mary had no children because she lived according to God's law <laughs> and had never been married. Oops! But she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. Hey -o. One day, an angel came to Mary and said, Hi. Ah! That God had chosen Mary. The angel said, God is with you. But Mary was afraid and confused. Huh? She wondered what the angel was talking about. Then the angel said, Don't be afraid. God loves you and wants to use you in a great way. Uh, me? You will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and he will be the king forever. Uh, hold on. Mary asked, but how can this happen? For she was not married yet and knew that she couldn't have a child until she was married. But the angel told Mary that the Holy Spirit would make her pregnant. Wow. So that the baby born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Wow. The angel reminded her that Nothing is impossible with God. Eh, okay, let's do this! So Mary decided to trust God and all that he had planned for her. Before their wedding, Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. Wait, what? He thought she had done something wrong. Uh. But Joseph was a man of God and decided to break off the engagement quietly so no one around town would think badly of Mary. While Joseph was thinking about all this, an angel appeared to him in a dream. Oh. Uh, hi? The angel said, Joseph, 
don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Huh, what? The angel explained that Mary's baby was from God. Wait, what? The angel told Joseph that the baby's name would be Jesus, and he would save his people from their sins. Oh, wow. And when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel told him and took Mary as his wife while she was still pregnant with the son of God. Uh, hi. You ready? Really? Yeah! And so Joseph and Mary trusted in God and the two followed the plan that God had given them to help bring the Savior into the world. Stories of the Bible. Jesus is born. This is Mary. Hi! You see, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but before that happened, she lived in the town of Nazareth. And she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. Hey -o. Hi, Joseph! Ooh, got it. Mary got pregnant by the power of God. Hey, huh? Joseph didn't understand all this at first, but an angel came and told him to still take Mary as his wife. Yeah, okay. So he did as the angel said. Not long after that, the ruler of the land, Caesar Augustus, wanted to count how many people were in the land. So Caesar Augustus ordered everyone in the land to travel back to their hometowns so that they could be counted. Joseph's hometown was Bethlehem, so Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they looked for a place to stay. Now I'm sorry. Oh, man. But there was no room for them. Uh, what about that? Um, okay. So they stayed in a barn, and while they were there, Mary gave birth to Jesus. Whoa. <laughs> she wrapped him snugly in the strips of cloth. Eh, uh, that'll work. And laid him in a manger. Excuse me. And so the Son of God, the Savior of the world, was born in a barn in Bethlehem. Stories of the Bible, Jesus and the Shepherds. This is Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God who would grow up to do amazing things. His parents on earth were Mary and Joseph. Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room for him anywhere else in Bethlehem. On the night Jesus was born, there were some shepherds in the field keeping watch over their sheep. <sighs> Suddenly, an angel appeared before them, uh -oh. and a bright light shone all around them. Ah! The shepherds were so scared, but the angel said, don't be afraid. Uh, okay. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Whoa, what? The angel told the shepherds that they would find Jesus in a barn wrapped in strips of cloth, laying in a manger. Okay. Then the angel was joined by many, many other angels, and all of them sang, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Then the angels returned to heaven. Uh, what does happen? And the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Yeah. So they hurried to the village. You say that. And found the baby Jesus laying in the manger. Wow. <laughs> After seeing Jesus, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had told them about the baby Jesus. Everyone who heard the shepherd's story were amazed. Mary made sure she remembered all these things and thought about them often. Huh. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep and praised God for all they had seen. The baby was exactly who the angel had told them he was, the Savior of the world, the Son of God.
stories of the Bible. Jesus and the wise men. This is Jesus. Jesus is the son of God who would grow up to do amazing things. His parents on earth were Mary and Joseph. Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room for him anywhere else in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was part of Judea, an area that was ruled by a king named Herod. King Herod was in Jerusalem when some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Excuse me. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard that there was another king born in Judea, he was very upset. As was everyone else in Jerusalem. Yeah, not you. So Herod called all the important priests and Jews together and asked them where this king was supposed to be born. The Jews knew that their king would eventually come and was always told to them that the king of the Jews, the savior of the world, would be born in Bethlehem. So they told that to King Herod. Then King Herod thought of a way to trick the wise men. Aha. So he called a private meeting with them and learned from them when the king of the Jews' star first appeared. Oh, God! And then King Herod told the wise men, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. Eh, uh, okay. Hey, on your way. But secretly, Herod wanted to know where the king of the Jews was so he could get rid of him. So the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where Jesus was, and the wise men were filled with joy. Woohoo! They went into the house and saw Mary and Jesus. Hello! Oh, look! Wow! And they bowed down and worshipped Jesus. Wait! They gave him special gifts fit for the king that he was, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then God warned them in a dream to not go home through Jerusalem, where King Herod was, but God told them to go home a different way. So they did. And then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up. The angel told Joseph to go to Egypt with Mary and Jesus because Herod was looking to kill Jesus. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with Jesus and Mary. They stayed in Egypt until Herod was gone and it was safe for them to go home to Israel. <laughs> when they returned, an angel warned them about the new ruler of Judea, who was Herod's son. This way. So Joseph and his family went to the region of Galilee and found their new home in the town of Nazareth. Look good? Yep. We'll take it where Jesus would grow up and eventually do all the amazing things God had planned for him to do. At Christmas time, there are lots of presents and decorations and people in red suits, but Christmas is about celebrating when Jesus was born. Welcome to Puppet Snippets. It's Christmas time, and we're talking about Jesus' birth. Hmm. So what are some of the things that can remind us about when Jesus was born? What about Christmas lights? Well, Jesus is the light of the world, and this world is full of like darkness and bad things. But Jesus came as the light of the world so we could be saved. How do I get these things unplugged now? <laughs> what about stuffed animals? When Jesus was born, he was laid in a manger, which is what animals eat out of. Real animals, not stuffed animals. Can you believe it? Jesus is the son of God, and he's the king of the entire world, but he came down as a poor little baby. I guess Jesus really does know what it's like to live in this world. Okay, you get out of here. Go back to your friends. What about a candy cane? Oh, sweet sugary goodness. Ah! A candy cane is like a shepherd's staff. When Jesus was born, the angel told some shepherds, and they went to go see the baby Jesus. Now, shepherds aren't very important people, but Jesus came for everyone. And if you turn the candy cane upside down, it looks like a J. And that J is for Jesus. And then I can put it in my mouth now. Ah. What about gold? Oh, shiny goodness. Ah. Oops. 
after the shepherd, there were also wise men that came to visit Jesus, and they gave him gifts. And one of them was gold, and also frankincense and myrrh. Even really important people realize that Jesus is for everyone, and he's much more important than gold. Oops. What about wrapping paper? Well, did you know Jesus came to Earth as a gift? But he wasn't wrapped in wrapping paper. What kind of mom would wrap her baby in wrapping paper? But Jesus is a gift to us. Jesus lived the perfect life, but then he died on the cross so he could take away the punishment for our sin. And he came to save everyone, including you. And you can learn more about that in one of our God's gift videos. What about you? What's something that reminds you about when Jesus was born? Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time. Bye! All right, guys, it is time for Crafting with Miss Iris. Miss Iris has come here and helped us with a special Christmas craft. Let's check it out. And now it's time for Crafting with Miss Iris, the part of the show where Miss Iris comes out and does a craft. Hey, KB kids, Miss Iris here. Are you ready for Crafting with Miss Iris? I'm excited. So today's craft is going to be very simple. Parents, you'll be so happy with this. I know, I know, some of my crafts I kind of get overboard and I get so excited, but hey, it's a family effort, right? So I know that some of you have had a really good time making crafts. Thank you. Some of you have shown me some of your crafts and I so appreciate that. Shout out to Zoe. I appreciate you showing me your pumpkin that you made back in October. I was so excited to see that. So please, please, KB Kids, if you do a craft, bring it into church so I can see it. Or take a picture of it and email it to Miss D so that she can share it. We're so excited to bring these crafts before you every month. So we are celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday Jesus. So we are going to just do something really simple. Now, uh, get out your crafting materials, right? Because this is Crafting with Miss Iris. Some paper, something to color with, scissors, maybe some construction paper, some string, your glue, and maybe get something that you can trace, like shapes. Today I'm using a circle, but maybe triangles, some squares and things like that, whatever things you can trace around the house. Why don't you gather some of those because we are going to make our own standalone 3D ornaments. So we know that we usually have a Christmas tree and we decorate it with lights and things like that, but what if we don't have a tree or a room for a tree or maybe we want to have some decorations in a place where we can't put a tree. So we're going to make our own 3D ornaments that will stand along so that you can still celebrate the birth of Jesus. So. Let's just start with a sheet of paper, construction paper, white paper, notebook paper, whatever you like. Take it and fold it in half, depending on how big you want your ornament, it's totally up to you. You can do a half sheet this way or if you do a quarter sheet that way. But when you fold it, make sure the decrease is at the top. So this is gonna help create our stand, okay? So what I did is I'm using just a regular circle. I just kind of took a top from one of my containers at home and I'm gonna trace it. Make sure wherever you trace that you trace it toward the bottom, okay? So we'll take this. I'm just gonna do a standard bulb ornament today and I'm going to, it doesn't have to be perfect trace it like that. So if you do a circle, triangle, square, whatever your shape is, make sure you that you position it closer to the bottom of the sheet. Remember, the fold should be at the top and the opening at the bottom, okay? So with this ornament, I'm going to, let's see. Put my two lines at the top, if we have an ornament, it usually has some kind of top to it, right? We're going to cut. Do not cut across the top, okay? Only cut your shape up to the fold. So here, I'm going to cut this out. Do the 
other side. Whatever it is that you want to put on your ornament that is going to remind you of the reason for the season, which is Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you did on the cross for us. But your birth is where it all started. You came here to earth to walk with us, to teach us, to show us the way. And we're so grateful. So let's use our ornament to write what it is that we most love and adore about Christmas. Once you decorate it, the extra paper that you have, just cut off a small strip on the end, okay? You don't need a very big piece. This one you can cut in half, about that big. Take it and fold it in half uh, in three parts so it kind of sits like that, okay? I am going to put glue on the two sides that are facing up. So this is the bottom, these two sides. I put the glue on those sides, okay? Once you decorate your ornament, you can do both sides or just one side. You'll place it like it's standing up. punch a hole in it and hang it somewhere if you like but if not it stands all by itself so whatever shape you use it'll work just fine as long as you create the bottom base for it to stand up here's some that I did here Jesus is the reason for the season set that one up I also put a scripture, Isaiah 9 and 6, for unto us a child is born. And then I even had some stickers, they were foam stickers, and I got some string to tie at the top for my ornament, and this one just says, I love Jesus. So look at that. We have our little decorations. Well, after all, isn't it a party? We are celebrating the birth of Jesus, so we've got party favors, and you can create your own. So go ahead and give it a try. Don't forget to show us what you've created. Get creative. Find what works for you. What inspires you? What does Christmas mean to you? What's the most favorite thing about Christmas for you and the, the absolute gift that God gave us in His Son, Jesus Christ? So have a very merry, merry Christmas, KB kids. So happy to come before you. Now, I'm hoping that there's a little bit of snow because I'm gonna put my ornaments up and I'm gonna go play outside. But even if there is no snow, I'm still so thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming here to live with us, to be that ultimate sacrifice so that we can live eternity in heaven with God. Thank you, KB kids. We'll see you next time. Until then, keep on crafting. This has been Crafting with Miss Iris, the part of the show where Miss Iris comes out and does a craft. Awesome. Thank you so much, Miss Iris. We appreciate you. All right, guys, it is game time. It is trivia time. Let's see if you guys know the Christmas story and let's see what presents we can unwrap today. Check it out. Hey, friends. Oh. 
I'm, I'm so glad you're here. I've just been baking some delicious Christmas cookies. There's just one teeny tiny, not really a huge deal, but actually kind of it is problem. I burnt most of the cookies, and then accidentally iced them all. So now I can't tell which cookies are yummy and which ones will taste like dirt. Oh, but maybe you can help. I've laid out all of the cookies for a Bible trivia game about the very first Christmas. I think I put all of the burnt cookies next to the wrong answers and the good cookies next to the right answers. If you can just help me answer all the questions, we can find those yummy non-burnt Christmas cookies. I'll read the questions and you just shout out one, two, or three based on which cookie has the right answer. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty hungry for cookies, so let's get started. Who visited Mary to let her know she was going to have a baby? One, a stork. Two, an angel. Three, a doctor. Remember, shout out one, two, or three based on which cookie you think is correct. Okay, time's up. Who said cookie number two? You're correct. You found one of the good cookies. Oh, let's see if we can find another. What was the name of Mary's husband? One, Joey. Two, Johnny Boy. Three, Joseph. Okay, time's up. Who said cookie number three? You're correct. That's two tasty cookies found. Just four more to go. Where did Mary place baby Jesus after he was born? One, in a crib. Two, in a stocking. Three, in a manger. Remember, shout out. One, two, or three, based on which cookie you think is correct. Okay, time's up. Who said cookie number three? Correct again. Great job, everyone. <laughs> Let's see if we can find another cookie. To whom? Did the angels announce that Jesus had been born? One, shepherds. Two, King Herod. Three, Bob the innkeeper. Okay, time's up. Who said cookie number one? That is correct. Oh, we've only got two tasty cookies left to find. What direction did the wise men come from? One, the west. Two, the east. Three, the south. Okay, time's up. That was a tough cookie. <laughs> Who said number two? That is correct. Oh, great job, everyone. Oh, think you can help me find one last cookie? Oh, perfect. Um, which one of these was a gift the wise men brought for Jesus? One, silver. Two, gold. Three, Diamonds. Okay, time's up. Who said cookie number two? That is correct. The wise men brought several gifts, including gold, to Jesus and his parents. And now, thanks to you, 
we have several golden brown cookies to eat. You are the best. Thank you. Hi, friends. Who's ready to open some Christmas presents? Okay, so these aren't actual presents that you can hold or take home, but I still think this will be fun. You're going to see a present on the screen. You're going to have a few seconds to guess what the gift is before all of the wrapping paper is torn away and the time runs out. So, as soon as you think you know what it is inside the wrapping paper, stand up and shout out your answer. Everybody got it? All right, let's see our first present. All right, what do you think this first present could be? Remember, stand up and shout it out if you think you know. Time's up. What is it? It's a bicycle. Do you know why bicycles can't wake up on Christmas morning? Because they are too tired. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, what do you think this gift could be? Time's up. What is it? It's a teddy bear. Have you heard why teddy bears don't ever eat dessert? They're too stuffed. I wonder what this gift could be. Time's up. What is it? It's a basketball. I can't find my basketball, but I'm sure it's around. Oh boy, another present. What do you think it could be? Time's up. What is it? It's socks. Do you know why socks are so sad? Because they are always dealing with defeat. What do you think is inside this gift? Time's up. What is it? It's cash. Do you guys know where rivers keep their money? In the river bank. Oh, I wonder what's inside this present. What is it? Oh, it's a puppy. Did you know dogs can help with home repairs? They're really good at roofing. What do you think this gift is? Time's up. What is it? It's a book. So, I read a good book the other day called Jokes from the Past. It was historical. Ooh, I wonder what this gift is. Time's up. What is it? It's shoes. My friend doesn't like to share his shoes with anyone. He prefers to be the sole owner. All right, this is our last one. Can you figure out what this gift is? Time's up! What is it? It's headphones! Do you know why sheep wear headphones? They like to be part of the herd. Well, that show sure was fun. Merry Christmas, everybody. Last but not least, it is time for 
Snacks with Dr. Nat, one of the favorite segments here on KB Kids. Dr. Nat has a special Christmas treat just for you. Check it out. Try and make it. Enjoy. It'll be awesome. It's time for Snacks with Dr. Nat. It's time for Snacks with Dr. Nat. Cause eating healthy can be fun. Join us and you'll see how it's done. Cause Dr. Nat will show you all you need. It's time for Snacks with Dr. Nat. Say goodbye to junky foods. They slow us down and put us in moods. Fruits and veggies give us what we need. It's time for Snacks with Dr. Nat. Hey KB Kids, welcome back to Snacks with Dr. Nat. It's me, Dr. Nat, and I'm so excited to be with you today. Do you smell that? Christmas is in the air. Cinnamon, peppermint, hot cocoa, marshmallows. Mmm, I love Christmas. Do you love Christmas? It's one of my favorite holidays. There's amazing food to eat. It's a lovely time with family and friends. But most of all, it's a time where we get to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What an amazing holiday. I'm so excited. So today, in honor of Christmas, we are going to make reindeer pretzels. <gasps> yes, do you like pretzels? I love pretzels. They're salty, they're crunchy, and that's probably as healthy as we're gonna get today. Um, we're gonna use pretzels. We're going to use, so you're gonna have pretzel sticks like this. So you make sure you grab some pretzel sticks, any size is fine. We're gonna go back to our favorite candy eyeballs. So grab yourself a couple candy eyeballs. You can find them at a local store, anywhere. Just make sure, and if you don't have them, it's okay. You can use sprinkles or anything that's fun. And then of course we need some red candy. So this time I have M&M's, one of my favorite candy, but it can be anything that's red, okay? Now, don't forget, before you make snacks, you always have to wash your hands. So I did that. Make sure your hands are clean. Make sure you're ready to go. All right, I forgot one ingredient. It's the most important one. We are going to use melted chocolate chips today. This one, you're gonna need to ask an adult to help you with, right? So you need two cups, uh, maybe one cup if you're not gonna make a lot, of melted semi-sweet chocolate chips. Melt it in the microwave, get help from an adult, read the directions before you do it, and then we're gonna use this for our reindeer pretzels. All right, are you ready? It's very easy to do, anybody can do it. So you're going to take, let me pick two pretzel sticks that aren't broken here. Doo -doo -doo. All right, so I'm gonna take those two sticks and I'm gonna put them together. I'm gonna take my spatula here and I'm going to spread my melted chocolate all over. It's okay if it goes on the plate. We just wanna make sure we get as much melted chocolate on there as we can. All right, that looks scrumptious. Can you see it? Okay, next we're gonna do the eyeballs. So go ahead and take two eyeballs. It's gonna look like a reindeer in just a second. How fun! All right, so put your eyeballs on your sticks. It's kind of like one eyeball per stick, right? Ooh, they're a little slippery. So put those eyeballs on there. Try to keep them about even, unless you're making alien reindeer. No, that's not Christmas. All right, so we got our eyeballs. And next, now I have M&M, so I'm gonna put the inside down for the reindeer nose. Can you guess what reindeer this is? Oh, you guessed, it's Rudolph. Okay, how fun is that? Now listen, you can eat it like this, but it'll probably fall apart, so you need to wait like 20 minutes, set it off to the side, go play something, go read a book, set it off to the side, and come back to it, and they'll be nice and crunchy. I made some just to show you. <gasps> look at those, look at those, how does that look? So excited to try it out. So if, when it's all done, you should just be able to pick it up and put the whole thing in your mouth. Ready, wanna try it with me? Mmm. Pretzels and chocolate. Mm. Guess what I didn't use today? 
We didn't use peanut butter. Oh, Dr. Ned, are you okay? I am. No peanut butters today. Catch me next time, though. We'll make sure we have a good peanut butter snack. Mm. That one's delicious. I'm gonna eat the other one, but before I do, I wanna say thanks so much for hanging out with me, making healthy snacks that are mm, mm good. you but I had a blast today let's go ahead and pray out our session together and close pray with me father I thank you for this opportunity that we've had to be in your presence today I thank you for all our KB friends who are listening I thank you that you are blessing them during this time of great celebration. I thank you, Lord, that you came, you died for us, you shed your blood, you uh, cruci were crucified on the cross just because you loved us and because you wanted us to one day be able to be with you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for this time of fellowship, this time of friends. And for some, it may be a time uh, of heartache and sadness. Whatever's going on in the family, we just pray for peace and your grace to abound in each and every one of our KB friends. We thank you for this time, and we thank you that you're blessing us with safety and you're keeping us until we are able to meet again. We love you, and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. KB friends, I have had a blast worshiping with you today. I cannot wait until next time when we dive into the new year and hear all the new and exciting things that are happening at KB Kids Virtual Worship. Until then, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year from me, Misty, signing off for 2023. Bye for now. day we are watching what we awesome. say. We are kingdom builder kids and we're here to pave the way. Hey, we are kingdom builders, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder. Building up the kingdom of the Lord, I am a kingdom builder. One more time, we are. I am a kingdom builder. Building up the kingdom of the Lord, I am a kingdom builder. KB Kids, out. Wheaton Christian Center, Kingdom Builders, Children's Ministry.